Hi everyone, my name is Ali Davis, founder of MediatorAcademy.com, home of the passionate mediator. You know what we do on here? We interview the very best mediators and thought leaders from right around the world. We find out how they've become successful, how they approach aspects of their mediation practice and handle all sorts of challenges and dilemmas. But it's also an opportunity for us to learn about new challenges and opportunities in our field. I'm passionate about mediation and I'm also a big fan of technology. So in this interview, I want to find out as much as I can about ODR and understand how a system can help parties resolve disputes. I also want to understand the impact and opportunities for mediators as online mediation becomes more mainstream. Now, my guest today is the Mark Zuckerberg of Online Dispute Resolution. <laughs> <laughs> he was the first director of Online Dispute Resolution for eBay and PayPal and has worked in the dispute resolution field for more than two decades as a mediator, trainer and consultant. He's the author of Online Dispute Resolution for Business, published by Josie Bass. He holds a master's degree from Harvard University's Kennedy School of Government in conflict resolution and technology. He's a graduate certificate in dispute resolution from UMass Boston, a BA in peace studies from Haverford College. He's currently co-chair of the advisory board of the National Center for Technology and Dispute Resolution, and he's the founder and COO of Modria.com. It's a real privilege to welcome Colin Rule onto Mediate Academy. Colin, welcome. Thank you so much, Alan. And uh, that was a, that was an incredibly generous introduction. Although I have one correction to make, I like to say that Mark Zuckerberg is the Colin Rule of social networking. So, <laughs> a little bit more accurate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I'll, I, when I interview Mark, I'll I'll, I'll mention that. Um, well, Colin, Modria's platform has been described by TechCrunch as a fairness engine. <laughs> Which sounds a lot better than the Judge Judy for cyber shoppers. <laughs> I did a That's little. True. I did a little reading uh, this afternoon. Uh, but on a, on, a, on a serious note, tell us about Modria and the platform you've built for resolving online disputes. Sure. Well, Modria actually is interesting. as a spin out from eBay and PayPal. So as you mentioned, I worked at eBay and PayPal for eight years, uh, and we built a lot of really advanced technology. At, at, uh, at eBay, we resolve more than 60 million disputes a year, and eBay spent uh, tens of millions of dollars building out some of that functionality. And what I said to the leaders at, at eBay and PayPal is, you know, there's a lot of use for this technology outside of the e-commerce disputes between buyers and sellers. So would it be possible for me to take this technology and expand it into some of these other applications? And they agreed to that. So in 2011, I spun it out and started Modria with a good friend of mine from PayPal, Chitu Nagarajan. Uh, and we've built Modria over the years and, and actually built on that eBay technology to do a wide variety of different kinds of disputes. So we do family and divorce disputes online. We do debt collection disputes. We do insurance disputes. We do tax disputes. Um, and we still do e-commerce and payments. So there's there's just a lot of issues that arise both in the face-to-face -face world and online. Mm -hmm. And the goal of Modria, Modria actually stands for Modular Online Dispute Resolution Implementation Assistance. So our goal is to be the operating system for online dispute resolution. So any kind of dispute, no matter how complicated or how simple, how high volume or low volume, we can use these building blocks at Modria to build an appropriate resolution path for that dispute. So, uh, so, so that's our objective. Okay. Yeah. So say a little bit more about the technology itself. Yeah, well I think um, uh, there are four main building blocks that I talk about at Modria. And the first one is what we call problem diagnosis. So in the face-to-face -face world um, of mediation, you know, most of the time, by the time we get access as live, live mediators to a dispute, odds are the parties have already been negotiating with each other for a very long time. And they probably reached impasse and they're very frustrated with each other. And that's why they feel the need to go and find a third party dispute resolver to help them um, reframe the issues. And maybe even that, that third party dispute resolver will play a decision making role like you talked about with Judge Judy. Um, the thing about online dispute resolution is we get access to disputes much early, earlier in their life. Okay. So uh, at eBay, we were actually talking with complainants before they communicated their problem to the respondent. So it's a different situation. You're not dealing with a negotiation that's at impasse. You're, you're trying to help set expectations. 
and expand that what we call ZOPA, the zone of potential agreement for those disputants. So that first phase problem diagnosis is enormously powerful and you can think about that as online wizards that can really coach uh, disputants through what their options are, what kind of resolution uh, uh, the process would look like to resolve their dispute, how long it would take, uh, maybe look at other resolutions that have been achieved in similar types of problems. So that's the first module. The second module is what we call technology facilitated negotiation okay. or TFN. And that's where the software really facilitates a conversation between the parties. There's no human neutral, so it's just the two disputants, but the software, and this is one of the things that Ethan Katch has written a lot about, the idea of technology as the fourth party in a dispute. So there's a lot of things you can do, especially if you know a lot of details about the dispute coming in, to build a, a communication environment that really optimizes the chances that the parties are going to be able to work it out. Now, if they can't work it out through negotiation, technology-assisted negotiation, then they go to mediation. And that's more traditional, what we think about in the face-to-face -face world, where a third party, human neutral, assists the parties in their negotiation and tries to work it out. And then the last phase is evaluation. And I intentionally use that word evaluation as opposed to arbitration, because a lot of the uh, evaluative processes we build are not necessarily enforceable in a court. Mm. Uh, and there are a lot of creative ways that you can get evaluative outcomes to disputes. Now, also you can use that module as an appeals layer too, if you think that an appeals process is appropriate. But these big main building blocks are undergirded by a very sophisticated case management infrastructure. So anytime there's a dispute, we open an online room. It can have audio conferencing, it can have video conferencing, it can have scheduling. It can have document management. The parties can communicate asynchronously via text. We have a lot of wizards where you can use agreement builders to help you put together uh, mediation agreements that both sides are happy with. So really what we're doing is convening online conversations and then working through this sort of staircase of escalation from diagnosis to negotiation to mediation to evaluation. Okay, so the diagnosis section is it is it something like a triage service, if you like? Yeah, you can think about it as a workbook. Mm -hmm. um, so there are lots. There are two different stages to diagnosis. One is where you know, say somebody's getting a divorce. The first thing they do is go to Google and type in divorce, yeah. and they don't know what the process is. Odds are, this is their first divorce, so they will probably want to find a website that can just walk them through it. What does this look like? What are the questions you're going to have to answer? Are you going to have to think about co-parenting? Are you going to have to think about spousal support? Are you going to have to think about um, dividing pensions? You know, these things, it's all new. Yeah. So that's before anybody registers. They're not providing any information about themselves. They're just going through a Q&A. There's a, a resource available to them so that they can educate themselves about what the process might look like and what the key questions are. Now, once they decide to begin that process, then they may register. And then they may prov provide some information about themselves, like, do you have kids? You know, uh, uh, just what kind of assets do you have? Those kinds of questions. Yeah. And then the diagnosis process can get much richer because then it can start to customize itself on the basis of the situation of the individual disputants. So that diagnosis process, I mean, and, but again, in an e-commerce dispute, that can be very expedited. Yeah. It's, hey, I bought an item, I didn't get it. Okay, all right. Um, what's the item number? All right, here's the item number. Okay, do we know tracking? Do we know the value of the item? How fast was the shipping that you paid for? How heavy is it? Uh, you know, it, what information do we have about that dispute? And we can dynamically diagnose and provide information on the basis of that information to the dispute. Okay. So that diagnosis process, you wanna make it very, very smart so that it provides the right information at the right time. And we eventually got to the point at eBay where 90% of the disputes that came in of those 60 million we could resolve without a human neutral getting involved. Wow. Uh, so no decision had to be made, no mediator needed to be engaged. And that meant that the 10%, the 6 million of disputes that did get to the point where it was a mediation or an arbitration, we knew that those were the cases that most could benefit from the help of a live human neutral. So the low hanging fruit type cases, that's just information asymmetry. We could get the key piece of information, maybe yeah. a tracking yeah. number or something, and work that case out quickly. but. That meant it was almost like a filter. The cases that made it to the later stages were the ones that could that, that neutrals really should spend their time on. Okay, so it sounds like the technology is very customizable depending on uh, who wants to use it. Absolutely, and you know there was a in 1976 there was a conference in the United States called the Pound Conference on the Future of Law, and a guy named Frank Sander yeah. 
uh, was a, a judge, and he, he did a presentation there, talked about the multi-door courthouse. And what Frank was talking about is instead of somebody walking in the door of the courthouse and saying, I have a dispute, and then they're ushered immediately into a courtroom in front of a judge, there would be a, a counter there. You'd say, what kind of dispute do you have? Well, I have a family dispute, or I have a landlord-tenant dispute, or I have an intellectual property dispute. And Sanders' notion was that there would be multiple doors, and the parties could walk through those doors and get a customized resolution process appropriate to their needs. Mm. So what we're trying to do at Modria is we want to build an online multi-door courthouse. And we want there to be not just a, several doors, not five or ten or a dozen. We want there to be thousands of doors. Mm. And I would like to build a custom door for every single dispute. And when someone comes in and tells me this is the kind of problem that we have, we can dynamically build a resolution process. You know, in Getting the Yes, a very famous book by, by Fisher and Yuri, they talk about fitting the forum to the fuss. Yeah. And that's what we want to do. We want to use technology to dynamically build an appropriate resolution process for any kind of dispute that walks in the door. So that's the ultimate aspiration of what we're doing in Modria. Well, what, are the, what are the key features of the technology then, of the platform? Yeah, so I, I talked about this case management system, but in pretty much every case there's going to be some sort of filing process. So we have a configurable intake process where certain questions are asked. Mm -hmm. And you know the beauty of that filing process is it can be very dynamic. So Based on the answer to question one, you can ask a different question two. So if, uh, if people come in and they say, all right, this is my role in the case, great. Well, you can give them a different filing process that asks questions that are appropriate to them. Uh, but then you have a real workflow system. Now, a lot of times you have the two disputants and you have the mediator, but you may also have an administrative organization that's managing the process. And they may have hundreds or thousands of these disputes. Mm. And they want to make sure that the disputes are being resolved effectively and uh, quickly, uh, efficiently. So what they can do is they can use this system as well to log in and then get reports out of all of the cases that are in the system. How many have been filed? How long have they been open? Which, which cases may be getting hitting sticking points? They can check the performance of individual mediators that are working cases. So that kind of workflow management is very important in getting uh, efficient management of all these cases. So you have the intake process, you have that workflow management. I talked about security and, and document management too. Oftentimes, you know, if you're in a divorce or if you've got a, a healthcare dispute or an insurance case or a debt case, you may be sharing information that you're nervous about uh, getting out. So one of the things that's very important in Modria is all of our information is encrypted. Uh, every session that people have is authenticated so we know every person that's using our system. We put lots and lots of money and resources into making sure the system is really bulletproof. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that makes me nervous about mediators using technology is oftentimes they use tools like Skype or they use email uh, or they use Google Docs and unfortunately these services are not that secure. And if somebody wanted to get into them it wouldn't be very hard for them to do so. Mm. So if you're sending out documents over email and one of the parties accidentally forwards that to someone else, your security is compromised. So we put a lot of time in Modria to ensuring that our platform, any cases that go through our platform, the, the information there is totally secure so that when mediators say to their parties, hey, I'd like to use this platform and I can assure you that your information is gonna be kept confidential if we work within the system, they know that when they make that representation, it's true. Yeah. So. Um, so yeah, the other thing we have is dynamic status and messaging. So anytime there's any state change on any case, everyone is notified. And that can be via SMS or that can be via uh, email. So the people always know what's going on in the case. And they can log in 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and they can post a new message, upload more information, see what information has been submitted by the other side. So it really does leverage the power of the internet for an always on resolution experience so that people always feel like they're in control of the process. So it sounds like the technology can be used to uh, resolve disputes uh, high volume uh, as Absolutely. well as identify those disputes that need special treatment. So in the intervention of a mediator, for example. Yeah, and, I, and you, put, you put your finger on an important point. You know, there are some disputes that I think shouldn't be resolved online. So this is not that I'm rah-rah cheerleader, every dispute in the world needs to come onto the internet. But I think a lot of mediators, maybe some mediators who are not that comfortable with technology, they say, well, I don't like resolving disputes online. Uh, and, and, and they kind of have a dichotomy in their head, are we gonna do this online or are we gonna do this offline? And I think the reality is our lives are both now. 
and the, our parties are coming in, and they use technology in every areas of their life, every area, every area of their lives. You know, we manage the the highest volume caseload for the American Arbitration Association. Uses our software, and that's uh, insurance claims. It uh, called the New York No Fault process. Every single one of those cases ends with an in person hearing, in in person arbitration hearing. Now, a lot of the cases don't even get that far because they work out online, but. Everything is online, the filing, the document management, the scheduling, even the follow-up. Once a decision is made, the arbitrator fills out all that information online and it's submitted to the parties. But the actual hearing, if it gets to that, happens face-to-face. -face. So I think it's very important people understand, A, not every dispute should be online, and there are plenty of times when it should be face-to-face, -face, but B, ODR is not uh, opposed to ADR. And the best use in many disputes is a hybrid of the two. And our platform makes it so that we have tools that can facilitate that face-to-face -face and make the face-to-face -face process much more efficient because you've already dealt with all the administrative nonsense before you get into the face-to-face. -face. Yeah, I mean, you talked about one of your uh, typical customers. Who, uh, you know, who is Modria best suited for as a platform in its current f uh, form? Well, it's a good question. You know, uh, we've had a lot of success dealing with. Um, tax appeals in the United States. We're now the number one company for resolving property tax assessment appeals. So we do all of the property tax assessment appeals for Nashville and Atlanta and New Orleans and Gainesville, Florida and Durham, North Carolina and Vancouver, BC. So it turns out that's a good transactional issue. You have an assessor and a taxpayer they need to work out a dispute. Our platform is a perfect fit with that. Okay. Um, but we also, as I mentioned, we're experimenting with family disputes. Mm -hmm. We have a project with the Dutch Legal Aid Board. Right. Turns out in the Netherlands, 75% of divorces are paid either fully or partially by the government. So we have built an end-to-end -end divorce mediation platform called the Rectvisor, uh, that, and we're going to be launching that in British Columbia soon. Uh, we're doing debt cases, uh, commercial ca commercial debt, where someone takes out a loan to expand their business and they can't continue paying at that rate, so they want to renegotiate the loan. Mm -hmm. uh, as I mentioned, we're doing AAA. We're doing these um, uh, insurance cases, which are medical insurance claims in the wake of a motor vehicle accident. Mm -hmm. But we're also doing more traditional mediation, landlord-tenant. We're working with uh, New York State and Michigan to build their uh, statewide court connected ADR case management systems. Mm -hmm. So we do real estate disputes. I mean, really, the, the spectrum is is uh, absurdly broad. Yeah. Uh, you know, we work with telecommunications companies. We we do product liability. But I, I will say that um, personally, when you ask what the best uh, application of technology is, I agree with you, Alan. I think it's high volume, lower value cases. You know, if you've got a ten million dollar case. That's enough money at stake to justify getting a lawyer, going to a court, having multiple hearings, having depositions. I think the main uh, utility area for ODR right now is higher volume cases, lower value, I would say less than, say, $25,000, but also cross-border. Mm -hmm. You know, situations where it's very complicated or expensive to get the parties together face-to-face, -to -face, that's a good fit with ODR. In the early days of ODR, we thought that emotional disputes, relationship disputes, were not a good fit. Right. And uh, and I, I remember back in 2000, 2001, 2002 saying, I don't want to deal with workplace harassment. I don't want to deal with divorce cases. But I think actually the culture has changed. And the younger generation in particular almost prefers online interaction for some of these types of cases. So I've changed my tune a little bit on that. Mm. But the uh, you know I think it's very important to choose disputes where you can effectively enforce the outcome. So I do have uh, potential customers who come in sometimes and they, they want decisions but they can't enforce the outcomes and I say, look, it, this is not a good fit with our solution. You know, you need to be able to reach a decision either by mutual agreement or through evaluation and then you have to be able to make that decision matter in yeah. some way, make that stick. Mm. Um, so I, you know, I think those are some of the constraints that I think about when we target case volumes to say, is this going to be a successful use of Modria? Yeah, okay. So you talk about where the technology is right now. I read a, uh, an article you posted in media, on Mediate.com, mm. the uh, future of social technology in support of peace and justice. <laughs> Lo lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Great. That's a very new article. You really do your research, Alex. Oh, it was a, a lovely article. I really, really enjoyed reading it. He talked about um, your hope for the future of mediation. I mean, in it, 
you refer to the the, the the concept of singularity, and you know, I think you suggested that we're 25 years away before we before we reach that point. Sure. Well, the singularity for people that don't know is uh, there's a lot of philosophers that talk about that in Silicon Valley. A point at which computers become more intelligent than humans, and what computers can conceptualize exceeds our ability to understand what the computers are conceptualizing. So obviously computers are very powerful now, but estimates say about 25 years out, mm. 2040, will be when that singularity occurs. And a lot of people ask me in ODR, you know, are you building digital mediators? Are you building digital judges that can go and decide these cases? And that's not really what we're focused on at Modria. Fundamentally what I'm interested in is using computer-mediated communication to help people resolve problems. Mm. So it's more of a facilitative model. And everything that we do here is dependent on human neutrals working within the platform. This is not about writing a computer algorithm that's going to replace mediators. Uh, although I do think a lot of the cases that mediators get are just simple misunderstandings. And computers can work that out in advance sometimes if it's one piece of information where's my item oh here it is okay great we don't need a mediator but uh, I, I think that once we get out 10 years 20 years hopefully you and I will both see that my friend although uh, I guess it depends on how clean living we we are between now and then but uh, I think that there's some very interesting aspects of how people trust computers in a different way than they trust a human neutral mm. and I think that human neutrals can play an important role but I think computers can play also a very interesting role, and we'll have to see how that pans out over time. You know, uh, the justice system in particular, I think a lot of the inequities and bad outcomes out of the justice system have been well documented. It's interesting to think how technology can combat that problem. Yes. And as it gets more and more efficient, effective, circumspect, I think we're going to see a greater and greater use of algorithmic approaches to resolving disputes as we move forward. Absolutely. Colin, look, before we go, I, <clears throat> I'd like to include um, some kind of demo, if, if possible, sure. of Modria, seeing under the hood, both from an administrative perspective, but also from a user's perspective, just to see how um, you know, simple, easy it is to use from a, a consumer, but also if we've got uh, administrators, you know, what they need to understand about, you know, the, the various building blocks, for example, or the case management infrastructure, all of that, how that works. Sure, absolutely. Um, I can do a quick video demo and uh, maybe you can include it in, in this interview and, and people can take a look. If I'd love to do further demos and people can go to modri.com and try out the, the actual platform themselves, but I think that's a great thing to include. It makes it a little more realistic to see it in action. Yeah, yeah, and lovely videos on your website, by the way, which really help, uh, you know, get across the idea and, and your vision. So uh, uh, if you're watching the interview, go to modria.com and there are lots of, lots of information and videos on that. Look, Colin, you've been really generous with your time once again. I really appreciate that. And um, I look, I, I, I look forward to a continued collaboration. I've put the dates for the um, conference in New York in my calendar. Great. The next ODR forum. We want you there. Yeah, so I look forward to that. And I'm sure Great. we'll be in touch before then. Fantastic. Thanks a lot, Alan. All right. Thanks, Colin.